Hey everybody, it's Carol with Refunction Crafts. Um, today I'm going to bring you a video to show you how I make my wine cork uh, purse charms. Um, I know I showed them in my last video and everybody was kind of unanimous about wanting to see another video. Um, these are <coughs> what I speak of. Um, these are wine corks, just your average everyday uh, wine corks. Let me show you. I have a whole bin of these wine corks. So you, what you want to do is you want to find one that's as straight as possible. Um, some of these that I have have wine on them. Some of them don't. Some of them are brand new corks that were never used in a wine bottle. But So this is what you want, just a regular wine cork. I have a whole bin of these. Uh, my sister bought me a bag of them um, actually about at least a year ago when she was out thrift, thrift shopping and she found them. Um, she figured I could do something with them. So um, recently I pulled some out and I started making some of these wine cork uh, purse charms. They're really pretty, really great for um, bridesmaids gifts or um, a, a, a bride that's getting married, something little simple to give a bride at the bachelorette party or what have you. But these are just some of the ones that I've made already. Here's another one. Super pretty. Some of these are Mod Podged with stuff underneath them, but the one we're doing today, I'm not Mod Podging because I tend to pretty much cover the whole thing, so it's kind of a waste of um, a, a beautiful napkin or whatever I might use to do the Mod Podging. And this one is actually one that I just finished today, and if you can see here, look at this adorable pink and white bee, bumblebee that's on this one. Now, here's the story behind this one. I was making a video. This, this actual purse charm was supposed to be my video today. And unfortunately, my camera decided it would stop recording while I was making this purse charm. So you don't get the video on this one today, but I will show you and I'll put up pictures um, after I complete this video of everything kind of close up. And this is one I did a while back that has these pretty sparkly butterflies. These were like, they're like rhinestones on top of felt. So they were able to be glued um, and rounded over the, um, the cork so that I could um, make it really pretty like this. And there's the dangles on that one. Super pretty, super fun to do. And I think you guys will really um, enjoy this tutorial. So the things that you're going to need <clears throat> is one cork. This one I have painted white. And what I used to paint it with is this chalk, excuse me, chalk paint. And this is paint that I got on um, Amazon. So everything that I'm using today that I purchased on Amazon, at least I think I got that on Amazon. Not positive, but I'm pretty sure. Um, so everything that I got on Amazon, I will provide you with links down below in the description menu. I'm going to be using this rose trim, applique trim, super duper pretty. I'm just going to be cutting a piece of that off and using it on this purse charm. I'm going to be using some of this gorgeous lace trim with pearls. And then I have some embellishments also sitting here that I don't know if I'll use all of them or not, but since I don't have my little pink and white bumblebee, I'm going to use this little yellow and black bumblebee on this one. So these are some of the, the things I'm going to be using. Now these little bumblebees I get them from Kiki's Sale on Facebook. Um, it's a Facebook page where she sells a lot of embellishments and lace and trims and things like that. The most beautiful stuff ever. Um, and so she's got this Facebook page and I'll include, include that link down below in the description menu as well. But these, she gets some different bumblebees and stuff. 
and I love bumblebees. I think they are absolutely adorable. And um, this is one of them. And right now, I think she did have some Sarah Coventry bumblebees on her site, but I think she may have sold out of them already. But uh, the bumblebees tend to sell really well. And so um, when she gets them up there, you have to get them really, really quick. So I will be using some of these embellishments, maybe not all of them. I have these little rhinestones that I'll probably put a couple of those on it. We're going to be using one of these um, swivel clasps for the top so that we can turn it into a purse charm slash keychain. And we're going to be using two of these larger sized eye hooks. And I don't know the millimeter size of these, you guys. Um, it's not on the bag. But I'll see if I can find that later and add it to the description menu um, as soon as I figure out what the, the size is. Because see, here's the bag and it doesn't have anything on it. But I'll figure that out and I'll put it in the description menu. Um, you don't have to use the ones that are quite this large, but these seem to work really well for these. Um, so that's what I'm using. Um, the other thing that I will be using is probably some of this rhinestone chain. This is an iridescent rhinestone on a gold chain. Generally, if you know me, I don't use a lot of gold, but um, I'm thinking I'm going to use that today. I'm going to be using some of these bead caps uh, because I am going to make a dangle charm for this. So I've got a bunch of different bead caps that I'm going to choose from. But we'll talk about those in a minute once we get to them. And we will also be using, let's see. Okay, we'll be using one of these head pins, and this head pin here is an inch and a half. It's a little bit tweaked, but we'll, I'll show you how we'll straighten that out before we use it. So we're going to be using that. And we are going to need a 15 millimeter um, jump ring and a 10 millimeter jump ring. So, okay, let's get started. Um, again, this is a piece of, um, that I cut off from that lace trim or that applique trim that I showed you. Again, this is from Kiki's Sale on Facebook and I am going to, um, adhere this to this cork with some E6000 glue and some hot glue. And just so that you guys know, when I use my hot glue, I use Gorilla Hot Glue. I like the way that it works. I like that it's a little bit, seems to be a little bit stronger than your average hot glue. And the other thing that I like about this particular glue is it, it um, has, gives you a, I think it's a 35 or 45 second work time once you glue your piece down. So I'm going to put a little tiny bit. Uh oh. So what did I do? I went and unplugged my glue gun thinking I was unplugging something else. Okay, guys. Well, looks like we won't be using hot glue on this piece. I may put a dab on it after the hot glue gets heated up. But I use Gorilla Hot Glue, again, because it seems to provide a better stick and it gives me a little bit of time to work with it. So that for me is important because um, I need that extra working time. <laughs> so, okay, so we've got this on here. And it's sticking on there very well. And once that E6000 glue dries, we don't have to worry about that going anywhere after that. So we've got that on there. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to start adding some embellishments. 
And so the first thing that I want to do where this rose, this is going to be my focal part right here, the part that has the biggest rose on it. Um, and I'm going to put one of these. Um, these are actually uh, acrylic roses that Debbie made me. Um, she's the owner of Kiki Sale. She made me these herself and sent them to me. So I'm going to be using at least one of these, possibly both. Um, and generally, again, I would use my E6000 and a dab of hot glue. But since my glue gun is not quite hot yet, we're going to go ahead and stick this down. We may end up having to put a dab of hot glue on it in a little bit to make that stay while we're working on it. Normally I wouldn't have to, but while, while we need working time, um, I like to make sure that everything stays in place and the hot glue ensures that that'll happen. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to put on is I think I'm going to put on this little tiny acrylic rose. And this is just one that I got. I think there, it's a bead landing rose that I got from Michaels off of a string of beads. Yeah, the glue gun's not hot enough yet. So back to the E6000. Little dot will do ya this is a little tiny rose and we're going to put that right below the big rose. There we go. So that's what it looks like so far. The next thing I'm going to do, and actually I should have done this first, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. Is I'm going to put a piece of this beautiful um, Let's see. It's a pearl and lace trim. I'm going to put a string of that across the bottom. And I really, really, really want my glue gun to do this. So I'm hoping that by now my glue gun's hot enough that I can press this on. So I'm going to, I want this, I want one of these pearl sections to land center with these roses. So I'm going to make sure that I set this up so that that's exactly where it lands and I think what we'll do is we'll cut this off right about there and Yay, the hot glue's working. Yay. <laughs> I do want to stick that on the edge with hot glue first. And then I'm going to run a bead of E6000 down the side of this ribbon. And I will put a couple of dots of hot glue to make sure that it sticks down and doesn't go anywhere while it's drying. a flower that's okay because now we've got our hot glue and everything will be right with the world <laughs> let me just glue this down and then we'll restick that rose down not the end of the world okay so I'm gonna stick a little bit of hot glue right here and press this rose back into place because there is still E6000 underneath there so we don't need to add more of that and we're going to do the same thing with this other little rose here and that way we'll press those into place and we'll hold on to them and secure them until that glue gets cooled off and cures and then we can continue working so that's what it looks like so far. Look how pretty that beaded trim looks. Oh, I thought something moved and it didn't. Okay, so that's the beaded trim. 
And now what we're gonna do, I think we're gonna add this little bumblebee. Whoopsie, I can't hold on to this for the life of me. Okay, and I think we're gonna add this little bumblebee Just trying to find a good spot for him. Yep, I think Mr. Bumblebee's going to go off to the side of this big rose, and we're going to put a little bit of E6000 there, and a dot of hot glue. And try not to overdo it with your glue. I may have put a little bit too much there, but that's okay. He's going to stick down and stay. And we don't have a lot of oozing, so we're okay. So that's where the little bee is going to go. Super cute. And then I think we want all sides of this to look pretty. So I think maybe what I'm going to do is add this rose to the back. Yes, that's what I'm going to do. And we've got our E6000 and a dab of hot glue. And down we go with that rose. And then just give it a minute so that it can dry before you start pushing around, pushing it around or messing with it so that it doesn't go anywhere. And then I think we're going to add just a tiny bit of this rhinestone chain. And I'm going to start up in this corner. Put a little dab of E6000 on my little piece of paper here and I'm going to go with a dot of hot glue just to get this rhinestone chain started and get it holding into place start right there and then what I will do is if I feel like I've got extra glue, which I do on this, and I don't want that big blob of glue sitting there and being noticed. I'm just going to get that off now while it's still soft and wet because it's just E6000. Okay, and I'm just going to kind of wind this chain around and touch it down in a couple of places. And I am putting the tiniest dot of hot glue on these spots, just enough to get it stuck and get it to stay so that the E6000 can dry. I got a little piece of E6000 there. There we go. Okay, and so now I'm just going to kind of haphazardly go along and attach this rhinestone chain down in different little spots. And now we've got another piece of hot glue there and E6000. And then I think I'm just going to kind of drape it around up to the top Sorry, I feel like I'm doing this one-handed here. I kind of am because I don't want to lose sight of where I'm at or what I'm trying to do here or accomplish. Okay, so now we've got the rhinestone hooked up there to the top. Get any strings off of there. Of course, we all know that we can get those strings off after the fact too, so it'll be all right and it's just going to drape down and then up. So I'm actually going to cut this off right here and that way I don't have so much that I'm trying to work with. 
and we'll take this E6000 here and just kind of make a little area where we want to go down and back up again. And we're going to meet up with this other rhinestone chain up here. And just a dot of hot glue, dot of hot glue, and let's work fast. So there we go. We've got that dangling there. We're going to go back up and sort of round it out to meet this other rhinestone chain up at the top. And it doesn't have to be perfect, you guys. This is just kind of a, a whimsical thing that we're doing here. So, um, you know, don't always worry that everything's perfectly in the exact spot that you thought it was going to go into because you can see it's a little, um, the rhinestone's a little crazy. It's just in different places, but it's cute. It looks really, really good. So that's the way that I did it, and I'm going to go with that, and I'm going to own it. So I'm not going to use those two pieces of bling. So the next thing we're going to do, now that we have all of that in place, is we're going to take our eye screws, and we're going to find our center point. This is the bottom. And I'm just going to kind of twist it back and forth like this. And then I'm going to start twisting it in. And you don't have to put a lot of pressure because the threads on the screw are going to naturally just go into the cork until it gets to the end. And there is no need to glue this screw in. It's not going to come out. It's not going to fall out. I know a lot of people you know if you're using the smaller ones and if you're using it in a different type of product there are times when I will use glue to glue my eye screws in but in this case there's really no purpose for it so you see I'm in the center of this cork and I'm just screwing it in with my fingers and I'm putting no pressure on this I'm just letting it go until it gets tight until the eye screw is just popping out at the top. So there we have it. Both eye screws are in. There's the bottom and there's the top and it looks really really pretty. Okay so the next step now is going to be number one we're going to um, put this swivel clasp in at the top and we're going to take the large jump ring this is about a I'm going to say it's about a 15 millimeter jump ring and I'm going to put that into the top screw make sure your jump rings are closed all the way and there we have that part And now we're going to put a dangle charm at the bottom. And what I'm going to do with this head pin, since it's very, very crooked, as you can see, it's very bent, I'm going to straighten it out with my um, jewelry tool here. I don't even know what you call this thing, but it's got two plastic pieces on either side. And if I do like this, it will straighten out that head pin so that it's not going to be all over the place when I go to put my beads on it. So this works. This is a good tool to have for doing jewelry making. So if you don't have one, it might be a good thing to, to go and pick up um, so that you have it for your jewelry making projects. I use mine a lot because these head pins, when you buy them, they're almost never completely straight. So, so now what we're going to do is I've got I want to take some of these pearls out. These are two and four millimeter pearls. Um, actually, I think I only have one of the really small ones there. I don't know. Anyway, we won't worry about that. Uh, I'm going to use some of those. And I'm going to use one of these beautiful rose 
glass or ceramic beads. And I'm going to take out my bead caps and I'm going to pick two, two matching bead caps here that I want to use in this project. Now the thing is to find two that actually match and that we want to use in the project. And I think I'm going to use these two. I like these. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of these four millimeter pearls and I'm going to put it down at the bottom of the head pin. And then I'm going to take my first bead cap and I'm going to put it so that the cone is shape is facing up. And that way this bead, this rose bead, is just going to lay inside that, that bead cap very nicely. And then we're going to put the other bead cap on the top. And now I'm going to use one of these larger pearls again. Oopsie. This is a four millimeter pearl, and then I'm using a two millimeter pearl. And that's what that's going to look like. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut a small amount off of the top, leaving just about a quarter of an inch there. And then I'm going to take my needle no or my round nose pliers and I'm going to put a bend in that just like that. And then I'm going to take my plier my round nose pliers again and I'm going to loop this around to make the circle until it closes and that's perfectly straight and aligned and I'm really really happy with that. So that's our dangle charm. And on this, I'm only using one. You know, some of my projects I'll put three or four. Sometimes I'll put six or seven dangle charms. It just depends on what it is um, that I'm doing. And on this particular one, I don't want to use a bunch of dangle charms. I just want it to be, because the, the piece itself is very busy and has a lot going on. Um, you know what I will do, though? Hold on. Okay, I am going to put one more charm. I'm going to put one of my silver charms, and this is just a little mushroom. This actually goes to a set of charms that are for Alice in Wonderland, but I'm going to go ahead and use it here. Although I'm looking at it now, I'm thinking it might be a bit big. It is. That's a little too big for this piece. So I think I'm just going to leave it alone for now. If I come up with something later to add to it, I will do that. But I do want to get this video completed. And we're still under a half an hour, so that is a hoorah for me. Um, so there we go, you guys. It's done. It's super cute. Look at that little bumblebee. Oh my gosh, you guys have to go over to Kiki Sale and see some of the things she's got. She's getting new stuff in every day and um, you have to really watch her page on a daily basis if you want to get in on some of the things that she has but trust me it's worth it to kind of stay in touch and make sure you're getting her notifications when she gets new stuff in because she's like I said she's getting new stuff every day. Um, so anyway I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I enjoyed doing it for you and Again, sorry if it felt rushed or anything. I already did this video once, so this was my second time around. My camera is still recording, so I feel very happy about that. And I will get this thing posted. Um, again, I will post, um, I will post uh, links in the description menu for um, some of the items that I used. Um, I can put a link to where I get my, well, my rhinestone chain. This is something that I got from BB Craft. They sent it to me free. Um, I'll have to see if I can find the link for that. Um, but I have a link for these little rhinestones and for um, these swivel clasps. And the eye screws, I believe my husband purchased these at Home Depot, so you can get those there. Um, let me see what else. 
and I am putting definitely, definitely putting a link to Kiki Sale on my description menu so that you guys can check it out. And what you have to do is you have to go into Facebook and you have to join the group. Um, so go in there and do that. Let Debbie know that Carol sent you over at Refunction Crafts and she'll be happy to hear that. Um, and until next time, thank you for subscribing. Thank you to all my, my old subscribers, even though my channel is not very old. Um, thank you to my new subscribers. I appreciate all of you very much. And let's get this channel growing so that at 2000, I can do another giveaway. Um, it will be something nice. I can promise you that. And what I'll do is I'll do a uh, tutorial on whatever item it is that I'm going to be giving away for um, my hitting my 2000 subscriber mark. So we've got about um, 190 subscribers to go before we hit that 2000 mark. So I have a little time, but the quicker we get there, the better. So share this video with your friends if you think they might enjoy watching it. Sharing and liking the video definitely helps me and my YouTube channel. And um, leave comments down below. Also leave comments if there's something that you think you'd like to see um, a tutorial on. Even if it's something that you haven't seen me do, that's okay. If you can describe what it is to me, I can generally figure it out. And um, I'm more than happy to get in and, and try and and make anything. I love, I'm eclectic, I love lots of crafts, I love to try new things, so um, please share that information with me and I'll be glad to give it a shot. Um, so anyway, thanks so much you guys, have a very blessed day and we'll see you soon. Till the next video, bye bye.